Welcome to a very special edition of the XVAD show, the talk show that really does get you talking on the Zandemonium Network live from New York City. So why are we having an episode today? You ask yourself, well, today is pardon Christian Saucier Day, uh, and so we're having an episode uh, to highlight that fact and share with you some information regarding uh, this young man. So more to come in a mere moment. Uh, so you can join in with the show. You can tweet us. You can live tweet us. Um, you can tweet the president. Um, please be polite. Please tweet pardon Chris Saucier. Uh, all of the information is on the page uh, Free Christian Saucier. Um, so you can uh, join in uh, with that. Um, you can also um, as a part of this event, uh, you can go to the website, which is www.freechrissaucier.weebly.com. Uh, That's www.freechrissaucier.weebly.com. And um, find out the many ways you can um, assist us with uh, this attempt uh, to gain um, freedom, freedom even, for a Christian uh, Saucier. Um, so the tweet-a-thon, as I said, you can tweet the uh, president. Um, uh, if you tweet uh, pardon Christian Saucier, um, the hashtag, and we'll share this in the live feed in just a moment. So also on Monday, uh, don't do it today because they're closed apparently. How dare they not open on a Saturday? Uh, call the White House on their hotline, which is 202 Four five six one 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 one. That's two zero two four five six one 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 one. And simply say, uh, please pardon uh, Christian Saucier. Um, all of those things are things you can do that won't cost you anything. Um, but as well as that, what you could do is you can donate um, to the Christian Saucier Fighting Fund, and we will share the links to that uh, during uh, this broadcast today. Um, you can give as little or as much as you can afford to do so. And also, uh, one thing you can do that actually, thankfully, doesn't cost nothing and isn't taxed um, is uh, that you could uh, pray. Um, so please pray uh, for Christian Saucier and his family. Uh, please pray for his wife, Sadie, uh, and their daughter, Cassie. Um, please uh, pray that they will be reunited um, with uh, Christian uh, very soon. Uh, so we have a lot of guests uh, joining us uh, today. Uh, on the schedule, uh, the first one up is uh, Sadie Saucier, uh, who is Chris's wife. Uh, then we have Ron Daigle, who is Chris's lawyer. Uh, Chris's dad is going to join us for a little little bit of time. Uh, Kevin, uh, Julio Rivera, editor of Reactionary Times, uh, will be along. And Dan Mayersberg from News Talk 614 uh, Columbus will be joining us too. Um, it's actually been overwhelming um, all the uh, people that uh, have been willing to be involved um, in this uh, project. Um, but for those of you that actually don't know um, so much about what's going on, I'm just going to tell you in very simple terms what happened. Um, Christian Saucier, uh, who is a veteran, um, served his country uh, in, in the United States Navy, uh, took six selfie photos um, on a camera. Uh, they were never disseminated. 
um, and other people had done the same thing and been found out, and they had been fined, uh, and they'd also been uh, demoted, which I think is absolutely fair. Um, but for some reason, um, the FBI took over jurisdiction of Chris's case, which they had no right to do because it was a JAG issue. Um, and it was unfortunate for Chris that um, the uh, prosecutor was appointed uh, by um, Bill Clinton and the judge was appointed by Obama. Um, and as I'm sure you're aware, Hillary Clinton was charged with 33,000 um, counts of mishandling cl uh, classified information. Now, Chris was charged with six. Now, Chris um, was under house arrest for a period of time with ankle monitoring. Um, he also was given a one-year sentence and he would pay to fine. So, so his situation was political, politicized and he was treated far harsher um, than, than not only his colleagues, um, but, but someone who we would have expected to bring uh, to be brought to uh, far more a measure, uh, and that's um, Hillary Clinton. Not only uh, did she walk away free, she wasn't charged. Uh, she was also allowed to still run for president. Now, why is this political, um, I ask you, you're asking? Uh, well, I'll tell you for why it's political, because um, when we maintain a double standard, when we treat one person more favorably than another because they happen to be a... Uh, uh, a, a politician um, is really uh, a concern. And ultimately, this is something that we need to stamp out. So whilst I digress, um, Christian is still in jail. He served sev seven months of his state of his sentence in a uh, federal jail. Uh, Chris suffers from uh, PTSD. He doesn't get his correct uh, medication um, as prescribed. Um, he's subject to cold, sh cold showers. Um, he really is not in a good way right now. And as I'm sure some of you are aware, the president, um, both on the campaign trail and after he was inaugurated, um, said that he would look into pardoning Christian Saucier. And here we are seven months in, and this hasn't occurred. Now, we're not here today to bash the president, um, because I don't speak for anybody else, but I personally support President Trump 200%. Um, I have his back. Um, but I am concerned that seven months, um, seven months down the line, this young man is still in jail. And we're here today uh, to talk about um, the fact that even his family and his lawyers can't get any information as to what position this pardon is in. So can you imagine how difficult this must be, uh, not just for his wife, you know, who's surviving um, basically um, on, um, you know, the charity of, of, of friends and people who are uh, willing to support her and her situation, um, but, you know, her, her child um, is, is growing up and her, his, Christian is witnessing uh, his child growing up uh, through through I am bars. So it really is time to do something. It's time to make a change and it's time for the president to step in and do what he said he would do um, and that's to pardon Christian Saucier. Um, because I don't know if you know this but if you are if you are convicted and we, we'll talk a bit more to his lawyer about this if you are convicted um, of, of an offense while you're in the Navy, um, basically what happens is you lose all of your benefits. So, so, so all of the benefits that would have been applicable to Christian and his family um, are only applicable now uh, to, uh, are not applicable at all. So, so they don't have any health care or any of the benefits that this young man has worked for and he served his country um, and, and this, is, this is how he is repaid. However, Hillary Clinton walks free and was able to run for president. Um, just before we bring Sadie on, I just want to say a quick, quick hello uh, to everybody um, that is in the live feed. Welcome to you all. Um, it is great that you're joining us. Uh, feel free to come in. I see a lot of you are watching but not commenting. Um, feel free to come into the live feed um, and uh, we will involve you. Um, this is, I'm going to bring now on um, Sadie uh, Saucier, who is Chris's wife. Welcome back to the show, Sadie. How is the world with you? And how's Cassie? Um, she's okay. She is running around the house right now trying to get my son and his 
fiance ready for prom here, so it's a busy day. Absolutely, because so, that's an interesting point. Because you know, whilst all of this is going on, you still got you still have your own. You've got your children to care for. You've got your life to deal with. Um, but I'm guessing that a huge part of your life has actually been put on hold due to this. Um, it is a, a lot is being put on hold. Obviously, because Chris isn't here, we can't move on and do the things you know we plan to do for our future. Um, and and then on top of that, oops, sorry, <laughs> I have Kathy being destructive in the background. No worries. So, you know, it's busy because I have you know a, a going to be two year old here and obligations here at home to try to you know hold this down while he isn't here. So, right. Because, because I was correcting what I was saying, that you, um, you, you don't get anything from the Navy now, even though your husband um, served, served there and was a veteran, and, and you basically, you don't have an income right now, is that right? No, we don't have an income. Obviously, they took that. They took our health care uh, back in January. The, the one good thing about this is my daughter uh, got free health care from the state of Vermont. Um, they couldn't deny her, but unfortunately for any other assistance, like applying for welfare and whatnot, the sad part is they wanted me to go after my husband for child support, and that was one other strike against him I wasn't wow. willing to do and said it was pretty unfair. And not only that, how does it look, you know, the, the wife of Chris Saucier is fighting to get him out, yet files for child support. I mean, people would love to run with something like that, and I feel like it was really the wrong thing for them to even do, and I can't get help because I choose not to file for child support. So basically, they are penalizing you uh, because you won't uh, turn your back on your husband uh, during this situation. I want to talk for a minute about um, the fact that you you, you stood by Chris um, because you know it's it's kind of interesting. All of the things that I'm finding out about the case um, that that make it even kind of more and more interesting as we go along. You know, like the fact that. Um, the prosecutor uh, from the case um, was, uh, her job was ended, but she managed to get her job back. And, you know, the, the judge was appointed by, uh, by Bill Clinton. You know, all of these things kind of um, feed into um, the ideology uh, of the fact that, that Chris was treated uh, unfairly. Now, what do you make of all this from, from the perspective um, of, of this example being made of Chris? when really he should have he should have been given the same um punishment as um his peers because if that had been the case he would have taken that and you know just sucked it up absolutely he should have been uh, everybody should have been treated the same way and the one thing that i had spoke to one of the sailors that was actually um uh, part of that was um he got he, he had sent me a message and i said you know well, you know, during this, you knew this was happening. Brothers are supposed to stand together. It's the military. You guys are, are considered a family. And I said, why didn't you, you know, show up at the courthouse? Why didn't you go in front of media and say, if you're right. doing this to one, you need to do it to all? And that, that really bothered me that, you know, Chris seems to be the one sitting in prison. And my only question to this person was, would you take his place? And he wouldn't say anything. He didn't right. say, yes, I would. So, you know, sticking together as a brotherhood in, in a bond, uh, you know, military brothers, brothers and sisters are supposed to have, um, he was really, really wronged and, and they really did abandon him. Um, Absolutely. I, and, you know, the interesting thing is when I first heard about this case, the first thing that struck me was this could be any of us. If the if the government can do this um, to a Navy vet, uh, they can do this to anybody. So that could be my little brother sitting in jail now um, being treated uh, this way uh, by the government. But I want to talk a little bit about uh, Mr. Trump's role in all of this. Now, uh, you know, we're obviously not here to talk trash about the president, and I know that you don't want to do that. Um, but aren't you a little disappointed um, that given the fact that that the president's presidential campaign um, gained mileage with his support for Chris? Um, how do you feel about the fact that, you know, we've reached the hundred over the hundred day mark and still um, he's not been pardoned? Um, that's sad. I mean, like I said, we had really a lot of hope. I mean, there still is that. I would say for me. <clears throat> There's that little bit of hope. Chris really isn't as hopeful anymore as he was. As far as um, our, our president, you know, Mr. Trump speaking about it, I really, I feel like I wish he wouldn't have said anything because it gave us that that whole he's hope. coming home. You know, he's going to do something, right. and, and I don't understand why something hasn't been done. And the only other way I could go about saying that maybe it's. 
Deidre Daly, the prosecutor, yes, she had to, you know, send in her report as well. Did she sit on top of it? Is it still sitting there? Um, same thing I'm going to say about Chris's DD-214. We still don't have a DD-214 for this man. Right. And uh, when I called Bass and said, you know, why does he not have a DD-214? And he said, oh, somebody made a mistake and didn't do something somewhere. Well, is it the same thing for his party? Did someone, you know, make a mistake and didn't, um, is it, you know, push to the side? Is it, you know, hidden underneath something? Um, where is it? Because that's the only thing. And we keep, you know, harping on, which I'll call it, but I feel like it's, 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 Warranted. Um, where's his pardon at? What's going right. on? We just want an answer. Is it going to happen or not going to happen? Is Chris going to do the rest of his time and get the pardon when he gets out? Or is he going to get the pardon now? Because it's, you know, like you said, it's been reviewed. Trump said he was aware of the case and everything. It's just we want some type of answer. Something would be more beneficial for me and uh, Chris, is our child, together, knowing, I'm going to cry, I'm sorry, knowing the future, what's going to happen, rather than sitting here and waiting, like, oh my God, is he coming home? What do I have to do to survive? Right. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, I, I hope some people out there are listening uh, to this uh, and, and asking, what can you do uh, to, to aid this? Um, I'm going to share in the live feed right now. Just just go now. We want to get as many people to tweet this uh, to the president as possible. As I said, don't be disrespectful. Just just uh, tweet uh, send this tweet. I'm going to send the tweet now. If you don't want to tweet it yourself, you can retweet me because we want to highlight. The whole point of today is to highlight the fact that Christian Saucier is still in jail and he needs to be pardoned. So go to Twitter right now um, and share that or copy it from the live feed and send it to the president yourself. As I said, you know, no need to be rude about this. Uh, it's it's absolutely fair uh, question to ask. Now, I, I get, you know, I've met you, um, Sadie, uh, you know, and, and actually we've become friends as a part of this process. And, and I've, I've met your kid, your little girl, uh, Cassie, and obviously, like everybody else who meets her, has fallen in love with her. Now, the number of times she mentioned her dad in my presence was kind of worrying. So even though she's only like eight, 18 months old, she actually knows she actually knows that there's something not right and that he's not there, doesn't she? Yeah, well, it, it's even closer because she'll actually, she'll be two September 7th. Um, so it's really, you know, close to that, you know, part where she's aware of things going on. And, and that was a sad thing because Friday um, we visited the prison and he just went up to go five feet to the bathroom and she screamed like she had a complete and total meltdown in the prison. Everybody's looking at us like I should have probably removed her, but I wouldn't have been able to come back in to visit, finish our visit. Right. But she screamed until he came out of that bathroom. So she knows the separation and it's kind of like, you know, I'm I'm going through that too. Um, right. So like I said, uh, Chris isn't the only one being punished. He is because he doesn't have his freedom. But, you know, mentally and emotionally here, this family and not only myself, a uh, uh, almost two-year-old child is. Right. And I'm guessing that, you know, uh, what what will make this, you know, doubly hard is the fact that the punishment was, was unjust and unfair. Um, now, I want to ask you about Chris, you know, because because one thing we haven't talked about, you know, is Chris's um, state in all of this. Now, I know that um, I know that you won't mind me saying that, you know, Christian had PS PTSD before he actually went into jail. So I'm guessing he was in kind of a bad way before that occurred. Um, I've seen pictures of like him before and after, like before and during, and, and was staggered to see the change uh, in this person. And I've never met Christian for the record, um, but, um, how would you uh, how would you say he's doing right now? Um, mental wise, I think that obviously he's getting whatever meds that they give to him at the time. They just switched one up um, on him, but mentally, I, I don't think he's. It, it's just the place, the state of mind. I visit him, and it's not my husband. You know, here right. prior to what happened having the FBI investigate us and going through everything that we went through, he had, he, his PTSD was very high. I mean, we basically lived in our home only. We couldn't go out in public because there was so much fear of being followed or who right. was following us at the time and what was going on. But as far as him, you know, just watching him visit with Cassie, he stares blankly. I mean, there's times where he'll just look at her and you can tell that, you know, he, he's, he's there, but it's, 
Right. Um, and he really, it, it, it's going to be even harder, I feel, when he gets out because he's going to have to try to readjust to everything. And it's going to be really hard for all the things that he missed, especially with Cassie. Um, her developing yeah, a language you... and her getting very vocal. He doesn't understand what she's trying to say where I do. And I think he gets frustrated with right. that. It's kind of like it saddens him a whole lot to see it or the new things that she's doing. It, it really puts a toll on his mental state. Well, you know, even as an outsider looking in, and I'm sure I speak for a lot of other people here, um, it, it makes me, uh, you know, very sad um, that this situation remains unresolved. And, um, you know, it, it, it's interesting. Um, I mean, I'm not a lawyer, so I'm not familiar with the process, but but isn't, isn't it bad that you can't even get uh, a status update as to with regards, with regards to where it's at right now? I mean, wouldn't that... Even that would assist you somewhat, wouldn't it? It would. At least we would have some type of answer. Like I said, it would prepare us for future and what we needed to do. Because, I mean, we, we do plan and we, we do day by day. But it's like, okay, are we going to have to wait another, you know, five months, you know, four months for Chris to be home? Um, do we need to prepare ourselves? Or, you know, is, is he going to get this part in? in it's right. really hard not having any type of answer whatsoever. Absolutely. And, and, and you know, I, I'm, I'm sorry to bring this up, but I want to talk a little bit about your financial limbo because, you, you know, you're at dan you've got no income right now and you're at danger um, of, of, of losing your house. And and obviously um, this this is something that um, affects you like immediately because you have a child. Um, it does, and, and like I said, uh, right now with the whole financial situation, uh, not being able to receive, you know, assistance and things like that, um, I'm not paying my mortgage. I can't. $1,200 a month, and then I have, obviously, everybody knows, homeowner's insurance, auto insurance, right. easel to travel. Yeah. If emergency happens, which we all know my truck just broke and I had to put a new rear end, that yes. $1,500 I didn't have. Um, and food on the table, electric, propane. I, I'm I'm not going to survive it um, at all, and I am avoiding the phone calls from you know the person we hold the mortgage to from the house. I'm avoiding them phone calls because I know that he wants his property back. And what am I telling him? You know, and, and it's it's come to a situation where I'm like, oh my god, what do I do? So I don't know. Um, and of course, was home, or we knew when he was going to be home. It would make it a whole lot easier for us to prepare ourselves. Absolutely. Uh, I just want to add the someone's asking. Um, I'm just uh, someone's asking me for to share the GoFundMe again, which I just uh, did. Um, uh, Stella is asking, did you get any feedback from the president or congressman or senators uh, regarding the situation? Um, I did reach out to Bernie Sanders um, and uh, a few other people here from Vermont, the senators. Um, and unfortunately, Bernie Sanders' office um, was great, prompt response getting back to me. The, the girl that I talked to was very polite. Unfortunately, he is out of um, his field. He can't help um, with this uh, issue at all, which, right. you know, I, I was hoping someone we could get an answer. You know, these <clears throat> aren't able to get anything because they choose not to. You know, where do I go? Where do I turn? So I have went there. Um, Nothing back from any of the senators. Actually, I, I messaged um, two D.C. senators. I sent them uh, letters um, going above and beyond because every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I send the actual two letters that I have printed here from the originals that the attorneys had wrote asking about the pardon and where it is. Right. I send them to Jeff Sessions and the president and the vice president, and I still haven't heard anything. Absolutely. Now, I just want to, um, cause we're going to speak to, uh, one of your, one of Chris's lawyers, um, in, in just a second, uh, who I believe is there with you. Um, I just want to ask you to tell people a little bit about how, uh, how they can help, um, and the, some of the things you're doing to, to keep the, keep this alive and keep people aware. I've already shared the, the funding, uh, the funders, the GoFundMe and stuff, um, in, in the live feed, uh, but tell people about some of the other ways that they can help uh, with 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 keeping this alive? Um, well, if they, the biggest one is if they go, it's pretty self-explanatory. If you go to Facebook and you go to Free Chris Saucier, um, there's many ways that have been put up there to help. One is to call the White House. Um, 
Another one is I did make postcards. If you would like a postcard, you can personally message me through Facebook, um, and I can mail you one, or I have plenty of stamps I have offered. Um, I will mail them out for you. Just give me your address, and I'll send one in the mail. Um, it, it's just continuous tweeting. Tweeting is great. Um, taking memes maybe that are on the page about Chris Ossier and tweeting them to the president or the vice president or, you know, Jeff Sessions, that's, that's another way to help. Um, so, but I encourage people to visit the, the free Chris Ossier page because there's a lot of ways to help on there that are posted. Absolutely. Uh, listen, uh, Sadie, thank you for uh, sharing your time with us today. Uh, and be assured that, that there are some of us out there. There are a lot of us out there that are actually champion, championing Chris uh, and want him home uh, safe and well uh, with with you uh, and Cassie. Um, so thank you very much for sharing. And um, I look forward to speaking to you again very soon. Yeah, no, I thank you very much. And I thank everybody else out there who is continuing to help and support and and keep it going. I, I greatly appreciate it. Um, and I do, yes, have uh, Chris's attorney, Ron, here. Um, so I will hand him over to you. And thank you very much. Thank you, Sadie. Uh, give Cassie a big hug from me. I definitely will. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Xander. Hi, Ron. This is Ron Daigle, who is one of uh, Chris's lawyers. Welcome back to the show. Uh, Ron, I hope you're you're doing well. I want to dive right into um, some of the legalities of this that I've talked about. And obviously, as a lawyer, you can really um, kind of feed into this more. Now, I stated on the on the show today, and this is something you and I have discussed, is that the FBI didn't really have um, there was no federal jurisdiction uh, with this case. I'm, I'm correct in saying that, right? I I feel that you're correct because there was punishment meted out at the lower level, um, it, it'd be just like, um, you know, to me it'd be just like if you got in trouble for something in the Navy and then they decided later on they were going to prosecute you as a civilian for it. Right. And that's what... That's what they did with this matter. Absolutely, and 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 it's you know for for me uh, you know as a as a, a lay person, not a legal person, the concern for me is that the other people that that did the same thing as Chris um, were metered out one level of uh, punishment, um, but Chris was given a far higher punishment um, than them, which which highlights you know, um, not only a double standard, but, but an, an, an inconsistency. And um, when you actually put uh, Chris's case next to Hillary Clinton's case, you know, Chris was charged with six, uh, six uh, counts of mishandling classified information. And Hillary Clinton was charged with 33,000. So I cannot see the justification in putting in, uh, putting into jail um, a, a citizen who is a veteran who has served the country for for six counts of uh, mishandling classified information, um, but letting a, a politician walk free and run for president who has has committed thirty three thousand uh, counts of that that we know of, and none of the things that Chris did were disseminated, but all thirty three thousand of Hillary's were. That's that's so true, and that, that the, that's the clear standard. There is that, you know, certainly her case has been treated much differently than, than Chris, my client's case. Um, you know, his case has been far blown way out of proportion. Um, when I was in Iraq, I used to work on customs, and we used to frequently take from the soldiers and sailors. Part of our job was to search their belongings when they come home to make sure that they're not bringing anything home that was inappropriate. Right. Many times they would have stuff that was deemed classified, uh, some of it very sensitive uh, in nature, that we would confiscate from them and dispose of it properly, and that would be the end of it. Right. That's, that's how we dealt with it there. Now, here uh, in, in Chris's command, when this happened in 2009, and the other two sailors were caught with the pictures, they were they were hit with a pretty heavy punishment for the military as right. far as that goes. They were given a fine and withheld some rank from them. So that that's a pretty serious punishment in there. Right. But but what Chris got was just like the total off the wall punishment. This this is something that's not even close to the same. Can you imagine going from paying a fine to a year in prison? I mean, he should be paying a fine and not doing a year in prison. Right. And and that's uh, one of the things that Chris is so Right. So easy for me to work for him because he 
takes full responsibility for his actions. Yeah, I was going to say that because he's never, he's never said he shouldn't have been punished. Yes, he doesn't. What he said, he said, what I did was wrong, and I shouldn't have done it. That's right. I deserve to be punished. It's the punishment that we disagree with. You know, it's not the fact that he, he takes full responsibility for it. It's just the fact that we feel he was way over punished for, for, for this level of offense that he committed. Clearly. And, and, and I don't doubt um, that if, if, if a uh, senior high-ranking politician hadn't been being charged with the same thing, I would never have known about Chris and, and neither would you. You know, they would have dealt with it the same way because this was clearly politicized. Oh, there's no question. Well, it, it was politicized from the get-go and, and even his initial attorney, um, uh, Tully Rinke, when they handled it, that's the name of the law firm, their criminal attorneys, when they handled it, um, they knew it was politicized. And, they, and that's why they initially came up with the Hillary, was called the Hillary Clinton defense, basically right. saying, hey, how can you punish you know, my client to this level when Hillary Clinton is getting nothing. Absolutely. Um, uh, someone just shared in the live feed, uh, Ron, which I think is, which is uh, an apt point. Dave just said, uh, what about Huma, uh, Huma Abedin? She sent classified information material to an unsecured laptop. A laptop. Shouldn't she be in prison? And I can't disagree with that. That's a great point. And, and you know, this whole, uh, the whole cast, Uma Abedin certainly because she was emailing stuff to an unsecured server. Um, right. Hillary Clinton was sending stuff to an unsecured server. Um, so they they were all they were all participating in that, they emailing back and forth classified information. Um, and he, every time they did that, that's a felony. Absolutely, but it, but clearly, uh, some people are, are are can can more easily uh, walk away from a felony or thirty three thousand uh, than others. You know. Yeah, it's... Sad, sad but true, and, uh, you know, I mean, I've worked in our criminal justice system since I was 19 years old. I've been there, worked in it for probably 30 years, and I've never seen anything like this, a case like this, and, and uh, I, I talked to a lot of generals and stuff. Uh, I met with them, asked them if they've ever seen a case like this, that nobody has ever seen a case like Chris's that's been no. blown, blown so far out of proportion. Absolutely. That's, that's why the only the only explanation you could possibly come up with is that it's very political. Absolutely. Now I I'm wondering. This has kind of occurred to me today. Uh, um, and once again, you know, I, I I shouldn't have to keep pointing this out, but I am two hundred percent pro Trump. But do you think that because this is so political, that it might be a reason why this is taking so long? I don't know. I think part of the reason why it's taking so long is I think that. President Trump is trying to go through the correct channels and give the chance. The, the Justice Department has to have a chance to submit a report. Right. And I think that's where the hang-up is right now, waiting for the Justice Department to submit that. I really don't think that President Trump would be afraid of issuing a pardon for political reasons. I've not found him to be that way. He looks to me like if he feels something is right, he'll do it. That's just right. Like, Absolutely. Him, from what I can see. Um, so, no, we have... I'm, behind President Trump 100%. I Absolutely. He's, he's speaking about the case and he's giving us great hope every time he talks about the case. And um, we're just hoping at this point now that, it, that that that's what it was, the Justice Department. We're hoping that any day now we may be getting a pardon. Right. I mean, I, I think that President Trump is the kind of person that would just turn up at Sadie's house and say, your husband is home. You know, I wouldn't really put that kind of thing um, past him either. Now, I want to ask you, um, Ron, just as a general rule of thumb, there is no, you know, uh, it's like when people say, you know, how long will it take? Uh, you know, how long is a piece of string? There's no kind of general rule of thumb to how long a pardon takes, is there? No, a pardon is basically your last resort um, for, for any legal measure. So it's basically the end of the line. Uh, you're going and you're basically saying, you know, none of the courts are going to be able to help me now. The only way I can get justice is through the president. So there's no time frame or anything. The Constitution just gives him the power to pardon somebody, but there's no legal process really or time frame or anything like that. Um, and, you know, they give you some forms that you submit and fill out 
and, and, and other than that, you really get no status on the case at all. Absolutely. Well, listen, thank you so much uh, for your time, Ron. I'm sure you'll actually be on with us again uh, very soon uh, to talk about this and other um, legal issues. Um, but, but you know, I, I, I think what's imperative right now, and I'm sure you would agree with this, is that people keep keeping this alive by tweeting the information, by calling the White House, and by tweeting the president. Would you, wouldn't you agree with that? I would agree with that. We're going to be, and also, um, we're going to be attending a rally Wednesday, next Wednesday, not this next Wednesday, the following Wednesday down in Connecticut. We're hoping right. to get some airtime with uh, President Trump there. We're going to be holding up our free Chris Saucier signs. And, Absolutely. And uh, hopefully we can do that. And thank you so much, Xander, and everybody else that put this together today. Really appreciate it. This is the stuff that's keeping us going. No thanks necessary, Ron. Uh, you know, all patriots, I'm sure, should uh, should be doing the same thing. Uh, but thank you very much for joining us today. We are a little bit time-bound, uh, but we will speak to you again very soon. Thanks a lot, Ron. Take care. Uh, that was Ron uh, Daigal, uh, who is one of Chris's attorneys. I'm going to just now uh, call uh, Chris's dad, uh, Kevin Saucier, uh, to get him on the line uh, to We're talk sorry. a little bit. Your call did not go through. Would you please try your call again? Um, I don't know what's going on there, but we'll, we will endeavor uh, to call Chris's dad. There we go. Success. This should be Chris's dad um, on the line. Hello. Hi, Kevin. Welcome to the show. This is Xander Gibb here. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. I'm well, watching your show. I'm really excited about all the people who are getting involved. Wonderful. You need to press mute on your device because um, we're getting a little bit of feedback. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, so welcome uh, to the show. Uh, your, uh, as I said, you're Chris's dad. Um, what was your first response when you heard that this had happened to your son? Well, Chris actually, actually told me about this uh, shortly, shortly after his, a daughter had been born. Um, I just moved down to Auburn, Alabama, and uh, I, I was blown away. Uh, I was really surprised. And I said to Chris, do you want me to call President Obama and see what he can do for you? And he said, no, 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 no. And uh, so, you know, he's a, he's, a, he's a big boy. So I said, we'll handle it your way, but anything you need, you let me know. Right, absolutely. But what was your first, uh, what was your first reaction uh, to the fact that your son had uh, been put into jail for this, where other people in the same rank as him had been given a fine and um, a, a drop in rank. Well, when he actually called me, Shirley, before he went in, uh, or we were we talked, and he told me that he'd been sent to a year in jail, and I, I was kind of again, once again blown away. Uh, I didn't find out other people had been given much lesser punishments. Uh, you know, see until later, and again that, well, that that made me curious, curiously. You know what's going on? Right. It doesn't make any sense because. I know my son's a good man, a good husband, a good father, and uh, for him to be torn away from his family like that, just, I mean, my heart just sank. Right. I, I, I don't doubt it. I've never met Chris and, and, and I, you know, uh, and, and, and I felt the same. Uh, now, what is, you know, how, um, you know, clearly, your, you know, your son has been thrust into the spotlight uh, in this way. And the response has been overwhelming uh, from members of the public, you know, with regards uh, to support. Now, does this surprise you? That so many people are willing to support him? Yes. <laughs> Actually, I'm surprised the whole country isn't behind him. <laughs> right. It's just such a, as, as Ron, uh, his lawyer, was saying, it's just so, such an unusual outcome. You know, he said he's talked to generals and they've never seen anything like this before. I'm just wondering why these generals aren't calling, uh, you know, uh, someone to try to get to the center of this. Um, whoever's in charge of the Navy should be saying, hey, this guy works for me. Let's take care of him. Right. Not, not, not put the screws to him. But Absolutely. So um, I would, I would, I would, um, I would tend to agree uh, with you um, on that. Now, I want to, I want to talk a bit, a little bit about um, the the fact uh, that you know, while while Chris has been in jail, 
Um, he, you know, he's, he's not been given his medication. Uh, you know, he's been subject to cold showers. And, and whilst this would probably not be seen as mistreatment, um, by most people, you know, cause, cause the ideology is if you're in jail, you're, you're there to be punished. But isn't this kind of cruel and unusual, uh, from the perspective as if you're, if you're, if you're prescribed a medication by a doctor that you should be able to get that, whether you're in jail or whether you're walking free. You're absolutely right. It's, it's almost inhumane. Um, I am a disabled individual. There is medication that I take, which I couldn't live without. Right. And, you know, Christian had his own medical issues with the Navy. Um, I don't know if you discussed that with his wife or not. Uh, he had that yeah. surgery for uh, a problem he was having, and they botched it. The Navy had them use his, their doctors instead of his own, and they botched it and left him with complications, which he dealt with for years. And, you know, he, he should be getting the very best treatment. I mean, the best treatment on the outside and at his own doctors, but he should be taken care of. Uh, and I'll be honest with you, prisons are not the nicest places in the world, and it's a hard place to be, okay? Absolutely. Uh, but humane treatment should be the... You know, we live in the United States. You know, we're not a third world country. Uh, we don't throw people in prison and say, fed for yourself. So he, he should be given the medication he, he needs, yes. Absolutely. I, I, I think that, that that should be, uh, you know, that should be, uh, you know, that should kind of go uh, without saying. Uh, now, um, what a lot of people are doing to to help with with this case is, you know, uh, you know, we've talked about some of the ways that people can help, you know, like by donating, um, by by tweeting the president, um, by uh, even just by praying, um, you know, we would think that surely that's one of those things, you know, even if you don't have any money, even if you don't have access to Twitter, uh, you know, there, there's, there's something out there um, that everybody uh, can do. Now, what would you say to the people out there that have been supportive? Um, what would you like to say to those who have been supportive of your son? Well, first of all, I'd like to say thank you very much. God bless you. You know, I'm a Christian. I firmly believe that prayer is, is the one thing you should do right from the start. Okay? Right. If you can afford to help out, fantastic. If you can give uh, support uh, by saying that uh, Sadie and Cassie... We're behind you. Hold on. Be strong. Uh, you know, there's just so many things people can do, and right. I think that there are a lot of people out there doing just that. But one thing I could say is do what I do. Pray every night, every day, for uh, God to take a hold of the situation and correct it. Um, and be patient, because God works his own time. Absolutely. Absolutely. I would totally agree with that. Uh, well, listen, thank you uh, for talking to us uh, today, Kevin. Um, I, you know, like yourself, I'm, I'm hoping that this will be uh, dealt with uh, in, in a speedy uh, manner. Uh, but, you know, until then, uh, our thoughts are with you and your family. Thank you so much. I truly appreciate everything you're doing for my son and his family. You're absolutely welcome. Thank you very much, Kevin. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Uh, that was Kevin Saucier, uh, who is Christian's dad, um, and you can you can also follow him on Facebook too. His Facebook link is on the XRAD Facebook show page for today. Um, I just want to remind you again uh, about the tweetathon. Um, please, uh, we'll share the tweet um, in the live feed, and we'll also share it um, on Twitter. Uh, so please, uh, either if you don't feel comfortable with um, sharing this. Um, you can, if you don't feel comfortable tweeting it yourself, uh, you can share it or you can uh, make up your own uh, to share with the president. Um, but uh, please uh, do be polite because, you know, we are, we do, we do, we do back, um, we do back um, President Trump. Now, our next guest who should be calling in any second uh, is Julio Rivera, um, a.k.a. Uh, the Conservarican. Uh, he's a good friend of mine. Uh, he's a good friend of the show. He is the editor of uh, the Reactionary Times and is on the TV like every other day. Um, and he's going to call in a little in a little bit and uh, tell us a little about his involvement in um, in this uh 
this campaign, um, as it were. Um, so please uh, donate if you can. Uh, please retweet if you can't do that. Um, please be sure uh, to uh, pray or uh, send your uh, good thoughts regarding um, a positive outcome for this um, situation. So I'm just waiting for uh, Julio to call in and then we will be talking to him. Oh, yes, sir. Um, but in the interim, here we go. Good afternoon, sir. How is the world with you? Everything is fantastic. And uh, how are you today? Um, I... I'm very, very happy to be here. Um, you know, to try to bring awareness to this cause, um, you know, which we've all been working, you know, really, really hard on, you know, for a long time. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Just really trying to, uh, really correct the wrong. Um, and it, it seems so, so obvious. Um, you know, you, funny when we, we all started working on this a long time ago and I know that, you know, we, we, we've all done a lot here. I, it doesn't really seem that, that, that difficult to me or is no. it, it just, it seems like something that, you know, kind of a no brainer and it yes. seems like something, um, you know, when, when you're talking about, um, you know, um, the, 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 just, just going back, just going back to, you know, like uh, the first thing that they kind of triggered me getting into it when I, I, I think back to that, uh, vice presidential debate, yeah. um, you know, when, when Kane and, uh, Pence were going back and forth and, you know, Kane with that, with that rat face of his, and he was, he was, you know, going off talking about, in, you know, how if, um, you know, with, with the mishandling of uh, classified information, like if, if their kids, which, which, which are in the military, you know, they both have kids that are, that are, you know, um, currently serving our country and, you know, God bless both of their kids. Right. So this is, you know, serving our country isn't something that's, you know, a partisan thing. I think, you know, whether you're a Democrat or you're a Republican, if you give service to our country, I think it's a wonderful thing. But, For sure. you know, when, when you're talking about, you know, politicizing, you know, something like, you know, mishandling of classified information or, or just trying to, you know, protect, you know, at all costs, you know, some stupid, you know, political campaign like Hillary Clinton. You right, know? exactly. And, and it, it just really made me sick. And that was the first thing that triggered me to write something about this particular case. And, and you know, you figure that was in, and I was looking at all the stuff, um, you know, like that they told the way back to the beginning of October. You know, I, yeah. I, this, that's how long this is just me. And this is, but that I got into it months after a lot of other people have. And, and, you know, why hasn't this happened yet? Exactly. Um, you know, and, and uh, it, it just kind of makes me kind of sick a little bit. Um, you know, but I mean, you know, with all due respect I, you know, to the president, I know that he has a busy job. I can't begin to even try to put myself in the shoes of a man like him, you know, for him. And, he, you know, he's, he's, uh, he's doing uh, a great job with a lot of things. Um, you know, and considering how, how busy he is and, you know, uh, you, you know, it, it, I, I, I just, I don't know. I, I, I just, you know, I don't, it's not about, it's not about being negative here. Today's all about, you know, just uh, trying to be as positive as we all can, uh, as, as we all can be, but, you know, we should all definitely say a prayer tonight that, you know, this is something that gets done right. You know, they, they finally, you know. So, something very simple. I think that would give a lot of positive uh, PR to the president. I think you know, definitely, you know. I do too. Where I think people, uh, regardless of you know, on, on both sides, I think would, you know, whether you're a Democrat, whether you're a Republican, whether you like Trump, whether you hate Trump, this is something that just needs to be done. You're absolutely right, and you know, interestingly enough, uh, you know, I actually found out about this from you. You know, something that you'd shared, and then I obviously saw things on the news about it. And the thing that was a real kind of, you know, a uh, harsh reality to me was that if they can do this to a Navy vet, they can do this to anybody. So you know, it's a huge concern um, that this that this can happen anyway but you know to happen to someone um that, that served our country um is is kind of mind-blowing um but i totally agree with you i'm 200 percent behind president trump uh, i totally have his back uh, and this is something that is quite simplistic 
to do. Um, and let's face it, you know, the, the, the country's been run really badly for eight years. Um, it's in a, in a huge mess. And, and our priorities are maybe not the same as his. Um, but, I, but like you say, I think this is something that could be done um, pretty easily. It's, it's like as simple as an executive order, you know, and it just would take a simple review, um, you know, from everything that I've uh, reviewed regarding, uh, you know, uh, Chris, um, he really had uh, an impeccable record of service. I mean, you know, me being in the Navy, I understand, you know, to, to be a first class, I mean, he was one, he was one step away from being a chief, um, which is like royalty amongst the enlisted. Wow. Um, I mean, you don't get that far. You don't get that far. You don't get two, through 11 years, um, you know, in, in being in the Navy unless you're doing it right, unless your heart is really into it. I mean, this was his career. Right. You know, I mean, I people refer to him as, you know, kind of a veteran, or I've seen sometimes people when they have him on the show, and he, and he is a veteran, obviously, but, I mean, he was, he was still, you know, actively still actively serving our country i mean he was on his way towards you know getting to through a 20-year career right um you know which is which is you know when when you know you go into the navy and you know a lot of people go in you know straight out of high school as an alternative to you know maybe uh, getting yourself you know a couple hundred thousand dollars into debt with education um you know but basically doing something noble and learning uh you know a, a trade as a machinist um, which is very important, um, you know, is basically one of the, one of the real, um, the, you know, cornerstones or, you know, real backbones of serving, you know, in the Navy is actually really like an, an you know, an important rate, um, you know, and, 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 and to, to get as far as he has and to, you know, with all the considerations, I mean, you know, when you, when, when I look at it and, you know, that, that federal prosecutor that was appointed by the Obama administration, you know, that actually decided that this was a case that they needed to take. Right. You know, uh, and to, to, to do it under those circumstances because it was, because it was there was an election going on. You know, it, it really just makes me sick. Like, it truly, truly sickens me that, that somebody could see, you know, oh, you know, we, we need some, you know, positive PR coming through this, or we need to make an example out of someone. Um, so let's take this guy. You know, this guy took six pictures. Six yeah. Meetings. It was the most benign thing that you could possibly do. You know, and, and, and you know, every other case, uh, anything that, you know, even resembling this was handled, you know, through, uh, you know, non-judicial punishment on the base. You know, they, they let the Navy handle it amongst themselves. Right. You know, and he would have probably, you know, by, by this time, I, I have to think that by this time, he would have already gotten back to being, you know, a first class. Right. I, I have no, I, I, I really honestly think he, his career would have continued and he, you know, wouldn't have the separation for his family. I mean, you have to consider what this has done to him emotionally. Oh, exactly. You know, the PTSD and everything else. I mean, he's got to get back. He's got to get back. First of all, now, now, you, now you're talking about maybe, you know, him getting out. He has to go through therapy and all the things just to, you know, put himself back in the position where... You know, he can be what he previously was, you know, already to his family. Yes, exactly. You know, they need him. You know, Sadie and Cassie need him. You know, and they're they're struggling right now without him. There is no this absolutely had no benefit other than just for you know, for for the political for the political game. You know, and, and I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, the last thing that I wrote about this actually kind of uh, focused it on the fact that the prosecutor was asked for the, resign, uh, the her resignation was requested by Jeff Sessions. Yeah. Um, she did resign, but she was uh, inexplicably reinstated a couple days later. Yeah. I have no idea what, what the reasoning was behind that. I well, one hand washes another, doesn't it? The reason for, for the, you know, continued, you know, continuing... Continuing to have him, you know, serve this, you know, horrific, horrific sentence. But exactly. I mean, oh, God, like we, we, we all really need to make sure that we spend the entire day, you know, uh, putting this on blast on social media.
Yeah, and you know the thing is for me that you know you know even if he has to serve the whole year and gets a pardon, for me that's actually not good enough because because the damage is already kind of like irreparable. You know, in another five months down the line, you know, how is Chris's mental health going to be affected um, by this? You know, when we said on the show the other night, we we, we uh, on Monday night we were talking about. Uh, Chris's situation. And, you know, some people have asserted that, you know, people like Sean Hannity um, and the president um, have used this for their own mileage. Now, I'm not sure that I think that's the case, but I can see why they would feel that. Oh, yeah. You know, that's actually, I think the, you know, the question, um, you know, at the, 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 the last column that I wrote, I was like, you know, it does beg the question if, you know, they, they don't wind up pardoning him, you know, was, was he basically used, or was the Saucier family in its entirety kind of just used as a campaign? Right, exactly. Um, you know, and it's, it's stuff like, you know, you figure, you know, there's a lot of, it was real easy to get a crooked Hillary chant going at a rally, you know, after bringing this up. Yes. You know, you know it's, it's, real, it's real easy to do that, and you know, let, let's face it, I mean, you know, uh, President Trump was really, really good at, um, Really rallying not just the crowds at his, you know, at his, at his events, but you know the country as a whole. Right. Um, you know, and this is something that he used very effectively uh, several times throughout. Um, you know, and, and I don't want to, and I don't want to bring it to that because I don't want to no. think that that's really what the intent was. Like I said, I really do believe um, that um, the job of being president of the United States is something that a lot of us. You know, um, and even as, as politically involved as we may be and as much as we may know about the process and as much as we may stay on top of it, uh, we have no clue of no. everything, you know, and even, no. even at, at that time, you know, as president, as campaigning, sorry, you know, you, you, he probably was getting briefed and he knew a lot of things, but it's nothing compared to what he's doing dealing with in real time, yeah. you know, when you consider like the, you know, the Syrian situation, what's going on with the madman in North Korea, when you're considering, you know, that, um, you know, Americans have kind of been fooled into thinking that the U6 number is the true unemployment number. Yeah. And but there's really closer to like 95 million people that need jobs and all the other things, you know, that are, that are involved, you know, the, the, how expensive it is for <coughs> people to try to get health care. There's just so much, you know, so I'm, I'm really thinking that, you know, somewhere down the line, you know, whoever it is that's really in charge of, you know, maybe throwing things in front of him, whether it be Priebus or whoever the case may be, whoever is managing a lot of the day-to-day -day things, that they're going to get to this, you know, and I right. hope that, like, again, I hope it doesn't become political opportunism that they, you know, that they're waiting to get to it for the right time, whereas this is just something that should have been done already you know but exactly like, the only thing we could do is continue to fight for christian and continue to pray for not only christian but for the entire family yeah and you know hopefully this is something that gets corrected uh sooner than later now i do you not think it's interesting that re, you know I, it, this this show is kind of very timely and 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 pronouncing today uh, pardon Christian Saucier Day was very timely given the fact that Hillary Clinton was in the news again last week you know for these very things because it came out about uh, Huma Abedin again with regards to her sending stuff from her her husband's laptop and to her husband's yeah. laptop um, for me it kind of it, it's it's interesting that this has happened these things have happened at the same time because um it, it, it highlights once again that you know and somebody said in the feed today why is Huma Abedin not in jail um and Christian Saucier is why is Hillary Clinton not in jail and and Christian Saucier is you know this is not about kind of wanting to get people into trouble it's about fairness across the board and there, there's no doubt that this lack of jurisdiction for the FBI was not um, a matter of concern for them because they wanted to make an example of someone. Because making an example of someone with regards to this takes the pressure off. But you know, who, do you know who I would have had real respect for if they'd spoken up for Chris about this? And that's Hillary Clinton. I mean, there was no way she was ever going to do it. But that, to me, would have been really ballsy, don't you think? She's the ultimate, um, I don't know, like, you know they, how they say that, you know, in a nuclear holocaust, you know, one of the only things that survive is, you know, a cockroach. 
All right, Clinton. I think she's like the, she's the ultimate political cockroach. Right. I mean, when you consider every scandal, you know, every everything that the, that that family has ever been involved in, from you know Bill to Hill, you know, from Whitewater to you know stealing the China from the White House. China. Last, I mean, you know, you basically you name a crime. I right. mean, you know, um, you know another another one of the group, um, you know, that's been really with us, um, you know, and steadfast in, in their um, support of, you know, the cause of Christian Saucier, which is our buddies on Freedom on Deck. Uh, yes. You know, Chet, yep. Justin and Brian, they had Juanita Broderick on their show, who was basically wow. uh, raped by, Hill, by, by Bill Clinton. Yes. I mean, you know, you consider how much, you know, these people have done. I mean, these people really should be in jail. I mean, they should both be in jail, you know, and, 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 and you're, you're talking about the most, and like I said, I mean, I can't think of anything more benign than taking a couple of stupid pictures, you know, on, yeah. a, on a, you know, um, you know, it, it's the, the, the technology on the class of submarine where the photograph was taken. Yeah, 40 years that, old. That, that, there wasn't, there was, there was nothing on there. Yeah. I mean, that, that, those photos, it was, it was ridiculous. It was more of a... I mean, it was more of a, a technical thing, like, you know, what you're technically you weren't supposed to take those types of pictures. Yeah. But it wasn't, it didn't even enter into the realm of, you know, setting up a private server to send communications about, you know, vital, you know, uh, American intelligence and, you know, uh, matters, of, you know, that we really need to be uh, protected or information really need to be protected, you know, to, to, to you know, protect our intelligence and our, you know, compromise. Hillary Clinton compromised our national security. Right, exactly. For a period of years on tens of thousands of communication. I mean, we could do a whole group of shows just on the misdemeanors that she's uh, committed. Yeah. And, you know, even you said about, you know... Even felonies, not even just misdemeanors, but the right. misdemeanors and the felonies. Yeah. I mean, this is crazy. If you look at how many thousands of counts of, you know, of uh, 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 criminality, you yeah. know, and it, it just, it really, it just, it, 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 there is a clear defined double standard, and that's kind of been, you know, what the theme of this entire thing has been sort of how, you know, one set of people, the, if you want to call them the ruling class, you know, yeah. um, you know, which is, we, we're not supposed to have in this country, we're supposed to have a country of citizen representation, um, but, you know, it's truly, it's almost like, you know, we're handling this almost like, a, you know, a monarchy where yeah, exactly. the ruling class gets to get away with it. And, you know, with, uh, you know, with as many, many times, thousands times over more egregious than what we have here. And then somebody who just took a couple of stupid pictures has their entire life destroyed. Yeah, it's kind of like the untouchables, isn't it? It's like these people can do exactly what they please, you know, but you're a common man, you know, does it. Um, you know, you said about the, the age of the submarine, even President Trump brought that up on the campaign trail. It was a 40-year-old sub, and anybody that wanted pictures of that had them already. So it was just such an irrelevancy that that it every time every time I hear new information about it, it really just highlights the fact that this was this was a you know, this was an inside job. This was in order to politicize them, and that is of concern to me and should be of to every patriot in this um, this country. Uh, we're running out of time together, uh, Julio, uh, but I know you'll be back with us uh, very soon. Uh, but tell people where they can uh, find out more about you and um, find out about your what you're doing with regards to uh, the Reactionary Times TV show that's coming. Yes, yes, um, we are uh, we're launching June 1st, Thursday, June 1st at 9 p.m. We will be uh, launching the initial episode of Reactionary Time. Um, it'll be uh, initially on Facebook Live, but we are actually, we're hoping that it'll also be on ReactionaryTimes.tv uh, on that date. We're working feverishly uh, towards uh, accommodating that, but um, we have uh, the ReactionaryTimes.com, uh, my column, they are in uh, Newsmax.com, the, the austere constructionist blog, as well as on Right Wing News and uh, Politichicks and uh, on Twitter at Reactionary TMS um, and uh, at Oh Yeah, it's Julio, uh, Facebook, uh, Julio Rivera, Conserva Rican. You can just follow my personal page. I actually really just like interacting with people personally, so 
you know, anybody, I still think I got at least about a thousand slots left for friend requests. Uh, if you guys just want to shoot me one and uh, God bless you all. Really, just everybody focus in on this today. Yes. Um, this is about the effort for Christian, um, you know, which is, is which we should all definitely be pulling together. We and should. I, I, I hope it's a. I hope it makes an impact today and that, you know, somebody somewhere with the influence to, you know, present this right to, you know, President Trump goes, goes ahead and does it. I was thinking about this very heavily the other day um, because, you know, I've had, um, you know, varying degrees of, um, you know, or varying opinions, you know, from the primary to now on Trump and everything. But one thing that made me very proud was seeing him the other day, um, you know, during his ceremony. Uh, for the National Day of Prayer when he brought up the, the Little Sisters of the Poor and really gave them the respect and the honor that they deserved after, you know, they were basically religiously persecuted by Barack Obama. And yes. It just made me feel like, you know, the right guy won. We've got the right guy in the White House. We do the indeed. Right needs to do the right thing. Absolutely. The family. Absolutely. Well, uh, God bless you, Julio, and God bless America, and God bless bless uh, President Trump. I'm sure you'll be back with us uh, very soon, but have uh, a great day. Uh, what's left of it? Thank you so much, man. Uh, Thanks God a lot. Thanks care. a lot, buddy. Take care. Bye-bye. Uh, that was the fabulous Julio Rivera uh, from Reactionary Times. Look out for that Reactionary Times TV because you might be seeing me on there sooner than you would think. Oh, yes, this ugly mug will be gracing the television. I'm always on the TV, even though I've got the face for radio. And so our final guest today is Dan uh, Mayersberg, who is a presenter on News Talk 614 Columbus, um, and he's going to be calling any second now, but don't forget um, about tweeting. Please tweet the president. Uh, please tweet Pardon Christian Saucier, as this is Pardon Chris Saucier Day. Um, it's great that he gets a day, but what we actually want him to have is a pardon. So please, Mr. Trump, um, we uh, humbly ask you today uh, to sign that pardon and to send Christian home to his wife and his beautiful daughter, uh, Cassie. Uh, so we're just waiting for Dan to call in. Uh, he should be calling in any moment. Uh, don't forget, you can make a donation to this campaign uh, via freechrissaucier.weebly.com. Uh, I'm just about to share that again um, in the feed. There are donate buttons on there where you can donate to help, uh, and this should be Dan. Hello, is this Dan? Yes, this is Dan Myersberg. How are you doing? I am doing good. Thank you very much, and welcome uh, to the show. It's a pleasure uh, to have you along. Uh, now, I'm sure you've been listening to uh, a lot of things that we've been talking about. Now, I know you've done some stuff um, on your show um, about... Uh, this topic too on uh, News Talk 614 Columbus. Uh, tell us a little bit about the things that you've been doing um, with regards to this. Okay, thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to be on. And my name is Dan Myers. I am the Dan of the show at NewsTalk614.com. And we are on the Team Trump Radio Network. Now, Sadie called in one morning and uh, she actually left a comment and for those of us out here doing our shows and everything, you know, there's a lot of behind the scenes work that people don't realize. Totally. And I went ahead and I looked at the profile, I went ahead and I mean, this happened in less than 30 seconds, uh, flying, fingers flying, and I went ahead and I got scared. So we got saved to be able to call back him because she was on the way to go up to see Chris. Right. We have been back and forth ever since. I have her on, uh, Jiggy has an open door on my show at any time. Um, if Chris's dad wants to call, that's great. Any of his attorneys ever want to call to update us, we start every we start Monday through Friday at six ten a.m. Friday morning we start at in the morning. Wow, you're brave. I'm sorry. I said in the morning. You're very brave doing a morning show. <laughs> well, you know, you, you have to. Someone's got to do the hard part. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Someone's got to do the hard part. So, I have, I as well as a Navy, as well, am a Navy veteran. Right. And I can tell you firsthand that the Navy goes out two different types of punishment. And there's never really any consistency to what they do. So, when I finally figured out the situation that we were dealing with here, I went ahead and... I started making some inquiries. Now, I have a friend um, whose son 
John serves on his set. And um, he had been commenting that after the second, after the re-election of Obama, he was talking about, yeah, I can't do this no more. This is really bad. They're changing everyone out within the command structure of our subs from the uh, commands all the way from the Pentagon on down. They're just getting rid of everyone right. who doesn't follow the line of Obama. Wow. And they have changed out a lot of the commanding officers on these ships that have been graduated from Annapolis. I had the opportunity not too long ago to speak with one of Chris's other shipmates that were looped into this situation. Right. And he is, um, I'm not going to give a lot of information up because I don't want no. anyone messing with him. No, of course um, not. I didn't hear what Sadie and I have had this conversation before regarding, you know, brothers fight for each other. And no, his brothers did not fight for him. No. There's no damn way. I know better. Having served, I freaking know better. So I went ahead and Sadie pressed this gentleman and said, hey, you know what? Did you offer to do time for Chris? And he had absolutely zero answer. So right. I got clarification of what happened on this ship. They had the first three times that this happened, they had a commanding officer that was probably what would be considered as pretty cool. Think of the cool boss at work. It doesn't freak out about everything that happens. Right. Doesn't automatically drop the hammer on you. That was that commanding officer. At the time that Chris was on the sub, they had seven different incidents of this taking place. We still have no reason why Chris has been singled out. That's the underlying theme of what everyone has been giving you today. Right. Nobody understands why. But what I know is that one of the four of the second set under the new ship commander has actually been promoted to be an officer. Really? That's interesting. That is a, that is, I have to be polite, that is just wrong. I think that's the easiest way to put it and keep everything classy here. Right. That really stinks. Well, it sounds like payback for something for me. Remove 
retention of classified material. He avoided prison time. He lost access to classified materials for only three years. And the judge only fined him $50,000, and it was higher than what the prosecutors had asked for. There's a very clear disparity in this entire situation that is unsightly and unbelievable to believe that Ms. Clinton, who has forgotten how many people, senior citizens, that she stole from. Right. And Whitewater. Yep. Don't forget about her cattle futures. Yep. That she made hand over hand on. Yep. These are things that would put you or I in the clique. Yeah. The time flat. Lost six billion whilst in the State Department. Uh, innocent Americans dead in Benghazi. Uh, numerous women uh, threatened because uh, she's protecting her husband, um, who uh, was was a rapist. I mean, you know, what more evidence do we need that this family, uh, you know, it's the whole family because it's not Hillary, just Hillary Clinton. They are all they're just dis they're despicable, you know. And she she has the audacity to call Trump supporters deplorables. So so clearly she is a despicable. Now I just want to make one more point because we we were we're kind of running out of time, um, Dan. Uh, now. Okay. Obviously, um, Mr. Trump on the campaign trail said that he was going to look into this and deal with this. And it's gone past the 100 day mark. Now, a lot of people thought that that was, was the turning point um, for this case, hence why we've ramped it up, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I, I still have total trust in the president, and I believe he's going to. Um, he's going to come through on this. I just believe it's going to be uh, when. What do you say to those who have claimed that people like Donald Trump and also uh, uh, Sean Hannity uh, used Christian Saucier's case for mileage? Well, what I have to say to Mr. Trump is from a very nice uh, movie called um, 20, 48 Hours. Right. And it's like this. You keep your word. Right. And that's what you do, Mr. Trump. You keep your word. Sean, and I understand that these guys are busy, but I'm going to tell you something. I've heard and seen a lot yep. since I was in the military. I saw and heard a lot when I was in the military. And I know, Xander, you've heard this happen, so you're going to be my witness to this. Yep. These folks on, that are listening to us now, they have never heard anything worse than Cassie yell for her daddy. Right. Never. No. I've heard it myself. I've heard it myself. I've been there and witnessed it myself. Um, we, we, are, we are at the end of our time together. Um, but tell people uh, where they can uh, hear, when and where they can hear your show, Dan. Hey, sure, yeah, not, not a problem. We are the Team Trump Radio Network. We're located here in Columbus, Ohio. And um, I'm on at 610, Monday through Thursday, 5 a.m. on Friday. And it's the Dan O Show. It's Talk614.com. And then, of course, we have Dirk Thompson comes on at 1010. He has the hunt for the truth. He has a Breaking Back uh, segment for those who don't like the Glenn Beck and have had enough of, of the circus there. And then, of course, as always, at 710 at night, we have the one, the only, the legend, Steve Cannon, who was at one of the terrestrial stations down the street. Um, very, very well known, has many connections with the Hollywood. And we have them from 7.10 until 9.10. So uh, most definitely do appreciate the opportunity to be a part of this today. Um, anytime that Chris's father, his attorneys, and well, Sadie already knows. I've told Sadie before a hundred times, and Sadie has always called in whenever she's wanted to. Uh, anytime you folks want to go ahead and get a hold of me, by all means, please do that. Because you always have a voice on my show, no matter what happens in this situation. Absolutely. Well, listen, thank you so much for your time today, Dan. It was a pleasure talking to you, and I hope we get to talk to you again very soon. I'm sure we will. Thanks, thanks for the time, and Xander, I hope you folks all have a great weekend, and uh, Mr. Trump, keep your word. Treat Absolutely. Amen to that. Thanks a lot, Dan. Thank you, sir. Have a great weekend. You too. Uh, that was Dan, Dan Mansberg, um, who is uh, from... Uh, 
uh, newstalk614.com Columbus. Uh, make sure you check them out. All of the information is on the event page for today. Uh, thanks to everyone that's made today's show possible. Uh, today was about Christian Saucier and nobody else. It was about um, highlighting the fact that he hasn't been pardoned as yet. Um, so please go to uh, www.freechrissaucier.weebly.com. Um, see what you can do to help, whether that be through just praying, uh, calling the White House, donating to the fund, uh, tweeting the president, be polite because we do love the Donald. Um, but um, above all things, just pray, you know, just give it to God. Uh, thanks to everyone who has appeared on the show today. Thanks to Sadie Saucier. Thanks to Ron Daigle, attorney. Uh, thanks to Kevin Saucier, Chris's dad. Uh, thanks to Julio Rivera, editor of Reactionary Times. Uh, and to Dan Mayersberg from uh, News Talk 614 Columbus. Uh, thanks to everybody for listening and watching. Um, it's been an extreme um, honor for me to be able to share this with you today and to continue this fight uh, to bring freedom to Christian Saussier, um as all patriots uh, should be trying to do. Uh, we'll be back with you on Monday uh, with the usual x Red show. Today has been a special uh, edition of the x Red show. Um, I want you to all have a fabulous weekend. Uh, stay safe, stay warm or cold wherever you might uh, happen to be. Um, but please remember um, Christian Saucier is still in federal prison and uh, we want a pardon. Have a great weekend everybody. I really do love you all. Bye-bye.